Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. I'm here at an off-grid property to install a hydraulic ram pump. What is a ram pump? It's a water pump that needs no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. This right here is the half-inch ram pump. This is able to take water in from the drive pipe side and send water uphill on the delivery side. In this particular install, we have about 70 feet of lift up the hill, which means I have to have a minimum of 10 feet of input head pressure. I think here we're gonna have somewhere around 12, and that will allow me to pump water well up the hill. So, how does the ram pump work? First of all, a screened intake will be placed in the water, and that will bring water into a supply pipe. That supply pipe will bring water down to a filter bucket, this is the land to house silt filter and air filter bucket. Water will go into the top of this. Air will come back out and then any silt from the creek will build up in the lower portion of the bucket while keeping the water supply to the drive pipe air free and silt free. So for the half inch pump, I'm gonna have to have a half inch drive pipe connected here. And that will go from a PVC pipe down to the pump. And so from this point here down to the pump is the head pressure. The head pressure is the water drop that brings the water down to the pump. So for every one foot of drop, it will lift between seven and eight feet up the hill. So how it works, water comes down the pipe, slams this valve closed. When that happens, a pressure wave is sent into the second valve, building pressure in the pressure tank, and that is what sends the water uphill. Whenever this slams closed and that pressure wave is dissipated, it will then bring the water, uh, shoot the water back up the drive pipe and then comes back down again and it continues to cycle back and forth. The creek that I'm installing on today is flowing with plenty of water, but it does have a gradual downhill slope. So for instance, there's about six inches of drop here, another six inches right there. But this means it's going to take a good bit of pipe to be able to get the full 12 feet of input head pressure needed. So we're going to first start with the intake. So let's go ahead and move to that. As you can see, there's plenty of water flowing in this creek. And so we are going to be placing the intake screen up here in this pool of water. It's somewhere around eight or 10 inches deep. So the intake for this half inch ram pump is going to be a three inch pipe with a bunch of holes drilled into it. I'm gonna be putting some window screen around that. And on the back end of this pipe, I have got an adapter that will go from one inch threads to poly pipe. So once that is installed, the poly pipe will travel down the creek to the silt filter bucket. Let's go ahead and get the intake screen assembled real quick. This piece of window screen will keep out some of the larger debris. It won't keep out all the silt, and that's what the silt filter bucket is for. So I'm just going to place this screen over the pipe and use some of these zip ties to keep this in place. About the one inch poly pipe, I'm just going to press this barbed fitting in here to get this attached. Just like that. And now I can place this down into the water. I'm gonna be putting a rock on top of that to keep it from floating up. I just placed a rock over the intake. As you can see, it is completely submerged and the pipe has now been placed into the creek bed and it's going downhill the whole way. And let me show you where the bucket's going to be placed. Now, normally the supply pipe would go into the top of the bucket, but I uh, forgot to bring some fittings. So for now, I'm just going to have the water from this poly pipe empty in here like this. going to sink the bucket down into this little pool. All right, the water level has now reached my outlet, and so I'm just going to use a couple of rocks to keep the lid on here. The silt bucket is now in place, and we have plenty of water. As you can see, it's a full stream coming out right here and also overflowing. So now it's time to take more of this one inch poly pipe, connect here, and then go on down the creek to the stand pipe. This pipe is going to follow the creek 
to make sure there is no air pockets or raised parts that will hold air. And once we get enough head pressure, then we can start skipping over some of the uh, turns here, but the first few feet needs to follow the creek bed. Places like this right here, we're going to press down into the water to make sure there are no high spots. The purpose of this black poly pipe is to bring the source closer to the pump, maintaining head pressure by way of a stand pipe. Now a stand pipe is simply a pipe that will stick up out of the water and it will basically bring the source closer to the pump. So all of the twists and turns you see here in this supply pipe are actually not going to affect the pressure wave of the ram pump because they are above the standpipe. The standpipe will act as the new source that will be closer to the pump. Now the reason you need to have a, a closer source is because the pressure wave would be too long if it had to travel this full distance back up to the source. You want to have your drive pipe only about 100 feet long max. 300 feet of poly pipe has made it to this point right here. From here, we're going to install the stand pipe, and that is just simply going to be 10 feet of one inch PVC pipe. That will raise up, and hopefully we'll have uh, less than 10 feet as the uh, water comes down this pipe. Otherwise, it will flow out the top, which is still okay. And from the bottom of the stand pipe, the PVC drive pipe, which is gonna be half inch, will then carry on approximately 100 feet down the creek. As you can see, coming off the bottom of the standpipe, the half inch PVC drive pipe is going down the creek. That's being glued up right now. Let's go up and work on the pump for a second. In order to keep the ram pump upright in the creek, I'm gonna be mounting it to this decking board, which will have some water, uh, some rot resistance to it. I'm also gonna use this plumber's tape or plumber's strap. And I'm gonna go across here and then use some uh, outdoor screws to keep this into position. So let's go ahead and get a piece of this right here long enough to go across these. Okay, just put the pump up right here. Put that strap right there on this position here and I can just use a couple of these screws to get it into place. Now it's definitely not necessary to over tighten this. I just want it tight enough to hold this into position. Now that I have the drive pipe fully connected, it's time to connect the supply pipe to the water source. There we go. That pipe is gonna start filling up. I was just picking up the pipe and it is empty right here. It's taken a little while, but I just got all of the air out of the pipe and you can see that water is now coming out of the stand pipe. That right there is about eight feet. So we've got uh, the pipe tilted at the moment to try to coax all the rest of that air out. There was a bit of an airlock right in there where the pipe kind of goes up, but I think we are good now. So time to move down to the ram pump. Yeah, I think these boots are pretty well wet. <laughs> I've now connected the drive pipe to the pump and I've turned off the delivery side on this side over here. So whenever I turn this open, it should have water squirt out of the valve. All right, notice how the valve is closed. If I press this, it will cycle a few times, building pressure in the pressure tank. Once that pressure is built in here, it will begin to run on its own. There we go, it's now working on its own. Now whenever I open this side over here, it will squirt water out. Half inch PEX line is being pushed up the hill. It's going to be the delivery pipe that takes this to the off-grid location. 
As I demonstrated with the water building up in the pressure tank, the same thing is true whenever the delivery pipe is open. The column of water going uphill has to build up enough pressure pushing back down on the pump to keep the waste valve going. So I've opened up that valve and it has filled up the water to match the height of our input or our source. So now I have to sit here and manually press this to push water uphill until it reaches a point where there is enough pressure pushing back down on the pump. So this could take anything from 10 pushes to 100. So I'm just gonna sit here and do this until the pump begins to cycle on its own. I pushed the waste valve several times until there was enough water going up the hill, and now the pump is cycling on its own. Let's go ahead and walk the PEX line up to see how far up the water has made it so far. The current placement of that delivery pipe is right over there. The homeowner wants that to eventually be right here on this little path. And so what's gonna happen is they're gonna add another 100 feet of poly pipe down in the creek, which will also add another about two feet of drop, and that will significantly increase the lift potential or the flow rate at the top. So uh, right now we're waiting for the water to reach the top, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like once it's coming out. You can see the flow rate we have up here is not very much, but over the course of 24 hours, that's a good bit of water. But also, adding that additional two feet of input head pressure will significantly increase this flow rate. We're not entirely certain how high we're lifting, but just judging the hill we walked up, I'm gonna say it's over 50 feet of elevation change. Well, we're about out of light. I'm glad things are wrapped up. I have the half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, and inch and a quarter pumps available on my website. I have a link in the description down below if you want to pick one of these up for your very own. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.